Well, my name is Monica Chardier, and thanks so much uh, for taking the time to come to the session here. Um, as I uh, mentioned earlier, my topic is make the jump. So these are these essential skills for transitioning from an individual contributor role as a product manager to a leadership role. Um, first, very briefly about me, um, I've been with Dell for about six years now. Um, product management was my, my first career, but perhaps as many of you, I made the move as quickly as I can once I figured out what it actually was and what it meant. Um, and the thing I love most about product management are the frameworks that we use to solve problems, that they're so applicable to not only our workspace, but our everyday life space. And I hope you'll see that um, through the conversation on leadership as well, is how we think about problem solving. Um, so for today's agenda, uh, I've really only got three points that we're going to talk about. Um, so one are the main differences. So the main differences between actually uh, being a hands-on product manager, what your day-to-day -day looks like, the kinds of things you're responsible for, uh, and what you're responsible for as a leadership. Um, they are drastically different, I will say, from firsthand experience, having worked in both functions. Um, but uh, there's lots of carryovers and frameworks that you can use to apply. Um, the next point we'll talk about are some of the key skills. So what are those skills that you'll want to develop before becoming a successful people leader? Um, and last but not least, how? How can you start building up those skills today so that you can be ready by the time um, that opportunity comes your way? All right, um, so leadership is not for everyone. Um, I'd encourage you all to picture and envision the person you've worked for who perhaps was a little too hands-on with the kinds of outcomes that they wanted, um, or perhaps was a really nice person, uh, but just was not very effective at getting outcomes from an organization, or someone who was maybe a superstar and talked the right, th said the right things, talked to the right people, moved up in the organization, but really didn't have the support of the people under them to really lead with that vision. Um, so leadership is, is a drastically different skill on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm sorry, a drastically different uh, set of skills um, that, uh, that you can start developing uh, starting today. All right, so what actually is different uh, between a hands-on product manager? Um, well, first and foremost, it's the primary way that you are measured for success. Um, so as a product manager, your factors, your KPIs, right, you're going to have KPIs that you're tracking, whether it's your quantity of users or uh, your financial measures, right, what they're returning, your retention rate, all sorts of KPIs, right? Um, and that all has to do with your product and driving those metrics, you're iterating, you're making decisions, you're talking to customers, making changes to try to drive those and maximize those values. As a people leader in product management, those metrics don't go anywhere, right? Those products are still, products rather, are still in your domain. They're still part of your, your sphere. Um, but you have a whole new set of metrics that goes on top of that, and that's your success with people. Um, so I can give an example from, I, I work at Dell, as I mentioned. Um, we have a, uh, an assessment that our leadership runs every year called the Tell Dell Assessment. Um, so it's an annual measure where uh, the team does a reflection on leadership um, and answers questions on a number of different dimensions. And our leadership takes those, that survey very seriously um, and actually goes into leaders' performance. And after two poor performances on the Tell Dell, um, you are up for review to be considered if you will actually stay with the company. That's how seriously leadership takes this from a people standpoint. Um, so it's there, there are different tactics right, that you're going to take on a day-to-day -day basis on how you are influencing those people on the, your team to make them successful. All right, performance ownership. Um, so similarly to metrics, when you are the product manager, you're directly owning performance. You're the one making those decisions. You're the one talking to customers. You're the one um, running the experiments, right, and doing the deployments and launching the new experiences. Um, and you can, you know, obviously be very hands-on. You can make the decisions on, you know, timelines, trade-offs, all of those things are in your wheelhouse. As a people leader, again, you're still responsible for those things getting done effectively, but you're not the one making those decisions. You're the one coaching for performance or coaching people on how to handle those situations. I'll use a very simple example here. Let's say a kid comes to you with a math homework that they're having a hard time with. And they say, you know what, I'm having a really hard time with this. And you say, you know what, you're right. This is pretty tricky. Don't worry about it. L let me take care of this. I'll do it for you. You can just turn it in tomorrow. Now, that's a silly example. But let's say you did do that. 
what's going to happen the next time they have a tough math homework? They're going to bring it to you, right? They're going to ask you to do the exact same thing. They're not actually learning how to solve the problems themselves. And I cannot tell you how many times I have either been tempted to do this myself or seen people do this themselves in the working environment because it just feels too hard to teach somebody how to do something or not worthwhile or whatever the decision is. Uh, but as leaders, we have to make the decision to teach, to coach, to mentor, to help people learn how to navigate those situations on their own so that they can become more productive and you can be more effective as a leader as well. Um, so it's coaching for those sorts of outcomes. All right, and number three, the types of problems you're solving. Um, so for likely the many launches, deployments, enhancements, iterations, whatever it may be for your particular product you've been a part of, no two are the same, right? You're going to have different dependencies, uh, different pipeline challenges, uh, different stakeholder dependencies, right? Different financial prioritization dependencies, right? Everyone is going to present its own set of unique challenges that you're working through. Well, similarly to that, no two people are going be, to be the same. Um, I'll give an example from some people on my team right now. Um, I have uh, one woman on my team, I'll call her Christine. Um, but Christine is extremely good at timelines. Um, I mean, if, if, if there is something that is highly complex and has a very tight timeline, I want her in the driver's seat because I know she will have all of the interlocks. She will have daily interlock calls. She will have multiple grooming sessions and technical sessions every week until the details get ironed out and no detail is left uncovered. I want her in, the, in that seat. At the same time, when she is in a situation where she's surprised or has, let's say, maybe some interpersonal conflicts with people, she doesn't handle those situations really well. She has a hard time managing her words and the way she presents her, her uh, constructive criticism, shall we say, to other people. Um, on the flip side, I have um, someone who's a wonderful team player, who the team absolutely loves, has been great at developing relationships, has even great product vision um, for what the long-term uh, you know, product should, should be and kind of where, where the team is going. Cannot deliver to save his life has a really hard time you know, uncovering what those dependencies are, planning those timelines, setting up the interlocks to deliver at the same time, just does not have the skills to accomplish what, ne what needs to fall into place for these launches to happen, coordinated launches to happen successfully. And coaching them requires two very different approaches as well, if you might imagine. All right, um, so talked about what some of those main differences are. Um, now, how do you develop those skills? And not only how do you develop those skills when you're in a leadership role, but how do you de start developing those skills before you're in a leadership role, right? Before you're in the situation where somebody is looking at you as their boss. So we're gonna take a look at that here shortly. Um, First and foremost is leading with vision. Um, so in leading with vision for a team, we, we've all had practice leading with vision for a product, right? What, what problem are we solving for our customers and why is that important? Uh, leading with vision for a team is similar in that um, you have to, to one, craft your vision, right? Base it in evidence, um, but you also have to socialize it and vocalize it, right? Not just once, but many, many times. Um, reinforce that vision, reinforce um, that, that uh, direction on where, it's, on where the team is headed. Um, and then you also have to ensure this is a third step, right? When you, you have one product, you're solely in, in ownership of this. When you have many people under you, you have to uh, constantly ensure that the entire team is working towards that shared vision, um, right? You're going to have great ideas that, you know, maybe would be a good fit in a different set of priorities, but unfortunately that's not something that we can work on as a priority at this moment. We have a bigger customer problem so we're going after right now. Uh, or how do you, on the flip side, grow that and say, yes, you're tackling a, prob a customer problem that we haven't had you know, the momentum or the resources to do yet. Let's go after this and get the support behind it. So it's checking in and constantly having these micro moments of helping sh shift and guide people, connect people to each other um, so that we are collaborating on a shared vision. Um, so in thinking about, you know, how do, how do we develop that in our day-to-day -day lives, um, I'd actually encourage you to pull out your phone briefly, um, and we're going to pull the room here. So you go ahead and scan the QR code. So on the Slido, you should be seeing a question. What's one small thing you can do this week to practice leading with vision? Are you seeing that? Yeah? Okay, cool. And so I'd encourage you to think of, of the smallest thing that you can do in your day-to-day -day role, right? 
uh, what's one step that you can take this week? Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll cheat. If you're having a hard time thinking of one, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, so um, I have a, uh, a product manager um, who's working on a, a new initiative. Um, and um, she uh, had recently you know, launched this initiative, had pretty good numbers for the start. Um, but at the same time, uh, the, we had a, a kind of a production snafu, shall we say, post-launch production snafu. Did those things happen? Has anyone ever had that happen to them? Yes, yes, we've all had post-launch production bugs. Um, and unfortunately, in this situation, they had to make the decision to toggle it off while they address the problem. Um, of course, never the first thing we want to do, but um, in vetting the, the problem and, and kind of trying to come up with a solution, they decided that was the best thing to do. Um, so what she did is she had to go back to her team and work with her engineering team and talk about you know the resiliency, the standards that we have for our customers, the standards that we have for our platform, um, and you know set the site that this is not consistent with our vision. We are going to have to roll this back until we address this, but this is going to be our absolute number prior, number one priority. Put the others aside for now until we can get this thing back in production. So that's something that she did recently to lead with vision within her own team. All right, and I am starting to see several responses come in here. And let's see. All right, so what we have here. So uh, meet with your team to ensure that everyone has the same vision. Yeah, that's a great checkpoint. Clarify product priorities. Yes, that's another good one as well. Delegate follow-ups. Ooh, I like that one. Um, would someone be willing to uh, chat for, speak for a minute on delegating follow-ups and how you can do that this week? I'm not sure who submitted that one. Anyone willing to chime in on delegation? Even if you didn't submit it, that's okay. Yes. Precisely, precisely. Exactly, yes, yes, you have that public buy-in. And even better, send an email follow-up or notate the after the fact to document exactly who's taking ownership of and what will be delivered when. Yes, precisely. Um, and so these are, these are great examples here. Follow-through is another really good one. Um, reminding yourself that the company vision is, yes, to ensure that whatever efforts that you're doing, you're also aligned with the company vision, right? Not just your own vision. Um, success metrics, that's another great one. So th these are really excellent examples, right? And these are all things that you can do in your job today to start leveraging your own influence and your own vision in your sphere. Um, and take over time, you can take that to, to bigger and bigger spheres, right? Um, advocating, so advocating for people. Um, so I cannot tell you how many one-on-ones that I have on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> um, my, my team is, is decently large. I've got 13 people who report into me right now, um, and we meet every single week with every single one of them. Um, and during that time, about half of the conversation is listening, listening to their needs, listening to what's going on. Um, half the time it's, you know, I'd say majority of the time it's work-related, but often it, it could be interpersonal related, right? People who are having challenges at home, people who are sick, who are taking care of sick family members, right? Understanding what their needs are and what's impacting them at that point in time. Um, sometimes they need help with that. Sometimes they just need someone to listen. They just need to, someone to hear what's going on. Um, and uh, and be able to support their growth. So so there are advocacy moments, right, that you'll have in a one-on-one -on -one setting, right? Um, being able to to support um, and and influence them through the challenges that they're facing at that particular point in time. Um, also, as as a leader, you are responsible for um, advocating for them, right, and being a champion on their behalf. Um, and something I, I wish I'd known um, about leadership when I when I came into this. This was my my first year um, doing um, uh, both performance reviews as well as um, comp, right? So, so you know, looking at raises, right, and what people were going to make in the coming year. Those were some of the hardest decisions I have had to make in my professional career. Looking at the budget that the team had, how much I knew I wanted to give to people on my team, looking at the constraints that I had, looking at, okay, can I go fight for more? Absolutely, I can go fight for more, but I need to have a rock solid case, and I'm probably only going to be able to do that for one, maybe two people if I'm lucky. Um, to push that through the door. So, you know, looking at, at what's the best way to help set them up for success, knowing their needs, knowing what their priorities are, right? Um, having those conversations so you know what's most important to them and what's going to make them feel successful. Um, and being able to, to set them up for, for success in that way. 
um, and uh, and being an advocate for them. In the, the conversations that we had around uh, composition, obviously I can't get too much into detail, um, but uh, you know, really knowing who you're gonna fight for and what you're going to fight for for those people um, based on, on what those priorities are and, you know, looking at the performance of the team, um, you know, who, who is, you know, going to get less or who needs a different kind of approach or coaching, right? Is it training that the team needs that I need to go fight for? Um, is it resourcing? Is it an offsite, right? Something to help boost team morale or bring people to better, you know, connected in, in, a, in a global environment, right? Where we're all working remotely. Um, but looking at creative solutions for what's going to help support them, um, and, you know, both professionally and, and personally to be most performant with their own product teams to see what it is that's gonna make them most successful. All right, and uh, we've got another one. So um, I want you to think about what's one small thing that you can do to practice advocacy in your work today. Company vision, talk about product, what we'd like to get there and prioritize steps. Excellent, yeah, yeah. So I, I think you guys are, are on the right track. Oh, some of the, the vision questions or answers are, are mixed in here. Um, but uh, are, there, are there any questions on this front on how do you find opportunities to advocate for people on your day-to-day -day roles? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Yeah. That's even more important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to tackle that a little bit with the with the third point here, but but I'll I'll give uh, I'll give one one comment on that front. Um, so, sometimes uh, in in my my I'll share my limited experience at this point. I'm I'm learning every day. I'm trying out new things every day with my team. Um, but uh, I, I've noticed a lot that sometimes people just want to vent. And it takes, you know, it, it's either a, a skill or, or just come out and ask the question to understand when are they just, you know, you know, kind of expressing frustration or they just wanted to know that like, hey, I'm working through this, I'm working really hard and it's tough, I'm having a tough time with it, um, versus are they actually asking for help? And those are two different situations, right? There's one where, you know, they just need to have visibility on it, right? Um, versus actually wanting someone to come in and intervene. Um, and even asking for help can be a skill in itself, right? Um, if they are in the position of asking for help, and maybe you can kind of help them figure out, like, is this something you really want me to jump in on? Are you looking for direction? Are you looking for additional resources to tackle this? Um, or, or is this there's something that you, you if not, what are you going to do differently to tackle this problem? So those are some thoughts that, that I have on that. All right, and the third point here um, is a, a probably the most important skill set that I've observed um, being different between being an individual contributor and a people leader is coaching. And how do you guide people through um, their, their own opportunity areas, reinforce the areas that they're doing really well, um, and help get them to, to the point where they're growing? Um, so uh, a lot of it is self-awareness. Um, so uh, people are, are may or may not be aware of their own strengths and opportunities. Um, there will be people pr probably more aware of their strengths, right, than are aware of their opportunity areas. Um, but one, one key tool um, in all of the coaching resources that, that I've read and I've listened to in the books that I've read um, is on reflection. So um, this is a, a technique I, I use quite a bit, um, particularly when something did not go as well, right, as it could have gone, or uh, maybe a communication um, caused a, you know, a, a trickle-down effect, right, and, and unintended consequences of, a, of the way communication went out, for example. Um, getting them to reflect on it. So like, okay, like, let, let's think back to that communication. Um, what was in it, you know? Um, what, what, what are you proud of that was in that communication, right? What went well? 
Okay, now let's say you're in this situation again six months from now. What might you do differently if you're in that situation again? Well, this, this, and this happened. Okay, why might that have happened? And get them to work through the problem themselves and come up with their own solutions. Um, because I can, I can, you know, hand them to say, you know what, that one really didn't go well for, from here on out. I want you to follow this template and I don't want you to divert from this template, right? Are they gonna get something out of that? Sure, they'll get a couple things out of it, but they're not gonna get the flexibility. They're not gonna get the problem solving skills um, and they're not going to have the, the outcome of that growth mindset of learning that new capability and deciding, I want to do this differently in the future. So they're taking ownership of the experience. Um, so that, that's uh, one particular way. Um, also offering constructive criticism um, or, or criticism in general, right? Um, this is probably the hardest part of people leadership. It seems like it wouldn't be, but actually it is um, when you're in the situation of, of having those those kind of those one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in particular. Um, it's pre presenting the feedback in such a way that um, they, they take it to heart, right? They understand the urgency of what needs to change. They understand exactly what it is that needs to change, what went wrong, um, and have the courage and the motivation um, to feel like they can work through it in the future. So being able to encourage and support them through that. Um, and then, of course, recognizing their growth and development. Um, I'm realizing more and more even now, and in, in recent months especially, how much I need to recognize the positive outcomes that my teams are driving, that people really need to hear that. It's not just the general appreciation. It's like, yeah, not just the great work team, right? They need to know what it is that they're doing well, and they need to know it frequently so that they feel engaged, that they feel bought in on what they're doing, and they have the encouragement to go and tackle bigger problems because they feel like they've solved the ones in front them. So, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Every seven days. I love it. I love it. All right. I will advance the poll here. All right. So we'll put this into an action plan. What is one small thing you can do this week to practice coaching? Um, and also share that coaching does not have to be in a manager, you know, reporty dynamic, right? There's peer-to-peer -peer coaching. There's people that you can do with your team members. There's th things that you can do with your friends, right? Um, your, your professional contacts outside of the workplace. You can coach each other. It can be a, a you know, mutually beneficial model, um, but ways that you can get people to, to reflect and help guide them on how they might approach scenarios differently in the future. I'll give folks a minute to uh, to type on your on your mobile screens there. Don't allow them to put the monkey on your back. Oh, interesting. Yep, yep. Being sure that uh, responsibility is shared in a way uh, that's fair to everyone. I, I want to talk on the, the second point for a minute. Um, congratulate and thank a team member on their progress. Um, I think that that's huge, right? People feeling recognized for what they're doing. Um, people feeling public recognized can go even farther, right, for the things that you're doing well. Um, but the way to get it the farthest yet is what specifically did they do, right? Um, calling out what, you know, what effort went into it, what um, outcomes they drove, right? Giving them more specifics um, really makes people feel, feel motivated and seen for what they're doing and sharing your experiences. Yep, yep, that's a great one too, those stories. Okay, well, before we wrap up here, thank you guys for, uh, for participating in this part. Um, so hopefully you've had a chance to come up with three different things um, that you can do um, to, to help prepare yourself for a leadership role. So now what I'm gonna ask you to do is commit. Um, for the next 60 seconds, please turn to the person next to you, shake their hand, and um, make a game plan for uh, one week from today. What will you have accomplished? from any one of these activities? What is one goal that you will complete? Well, folks, what I've got for you here is just a recap of what we talked about today. Um, so we talked about the main differences, um, how you're measured uh, on people success versus product success, um, how you are not the one owning performance per se, but you're coaching for performance, um, and knowing that just like every launch is different, every person is different, and is gonna have different uh, different needs and different things that are gonna motivate and support them. Um, some of the three, three skills that you can develop to help prepare you for a leadership role, leading with vision, um, advocating for people, and coaching, developing coaching as a skill. Uh, and now you've developed an action plan for something that you can accomplish this week to help set yourself up for success and start making progress, right? And so you've got one goal for this week. What's gonna be your goal for next week?
what's going to be your goal for the week after that, things that you can do in your role today um, to help prepare you for leading people. And that's what I have. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, Monica Chardier, love to connect.